Okay, a rear wheel, and then you can move on to the front of the car, and we're getting there. It's so funny, I'm still blown away that this is on a piece of aluminum. I don't even remember starting this on aluminum. <laughs> I have a bunch of aluminum, small panels, cutoffs. Um, I used to, well, I still do a lot of paintings on aluminum, but on this size, I've been doing almost all of them on ampersand, and that ampersand prepared board, and uh, I was just convinced that's what I did and I flipped it over and it's on aluminum so in the end that doesn't um, doesn't matter at all aluminum is probably a little bit more archival than the ampersand board just because the board can if it's not cared for it can deteriorate um, since it's a wood product you know it expands and contracts and it's subject to humidity and all that fun stuff um, I'm going to get you guys closer. So it, it, I'll, I'll finish that, that thought in a second. Um, what I'm doing is basically just the same exact thing. So I've got black in the brush now. And I'm just running around and cleaning up anything that needs to be cleaned up from that original uh, template. Uh, so so back to the aluminum and ampersand. Um, that said, if if a piece of artwork... Is, is cared for meaning it's you know it's not subject to wild humidity and um, what are you doing there uh, wild humidity and um, you know direct sunlight and changes in temperature and all that all that stuff you wouldn't do to a painting normally um, then the ampersand board holds up extremely well it's uh it's very archival um, with this this part here wasn't wasn't dark enough so what I did was I, I tightened up that edge on the wheel I was considering tightening tightening up the shadow but I don't want to do that I think what I'll do is when I get to the airbrush part I'll use that tight edge for the wheel for the tire and then I'll just fade it out a little bit and leave that softer edge for the um, for the uh, bottom because I think part of that is shadow not tire so um, this is uh, pretty close though right off the bat there's not much left to do on the back wheel because it's in such it's it's in a lot it's in perspective so it's more condensed it's more squished than the front one so you don't see as much so yeah so the only other thing uh, normally with aluminum paneled paintings I uh, use a clear coat um, a 2k automotive clear coat but with this one, I think I'm going to stick with the UVLS for the same same kind of reasons overall. I think um, these paintings have looked really, really good with that satiny type clear coat that the UVLS gives. And um, a 2K show clear is going to give a automotive clear, a glossy, super high gloss clear. And, uh, and for this painting, I... I don't know if I want that so I think I'm gonna go with satin so these are just again like everything these are just things that kind of float through my mind while I'm working on these uh, other things are titles like I really don't have a title for this painting yet as you can tell by me constantly calling it the Chevelle painting <laughs> so there's no title for this yet but usually that kind of comes by itself as well all right I think I'm good I got the black details in here there's just some quick shading on this, a little, that same brightening of the highlight that I did on the front wheel and the back wheel is done. I do have to clean up the um, white wall though a little bit. So for that, I'm not going to use white. I actually have a gray in here. It's going to appear white, but um, white would be why it would look like this down here and that line is so thin that it's not really it's not really that bold so it doesn't have that much guts to it so I'm gonna, I, what I did is I mixed up a tiny bit of gray just add a little bit of black to it and that's what I'm going to use to finish up that and that's all there is so it's just that little bit of bumping around and since I have this in here it is a pretty light gray so I mean I can kind of look for other little things and there really aren't for this color. I need bright white for the rest of it. 
<clears throat> right. So for the white, I'm going to add those little tiny highlights now. So I could just hit them with the airbrush after. So again, there's one on the trim. I can clean up the hub of the wheel here. And there's another highlight on top of the hub. As well as on one of the lugs too. Oh, there's a little one down here too. That looks good. Ah, super easy, super easy. This is, and the thing of it is, it boils down to a lot of the stuff I do. You just have to paint what's there, you know, and, and you kind of ignore it, even though you know what all the parts are. You know that it's the lug of the wheel and the, you know, the slots are in it and everything. You try to just, I try to just ignore that and just really paint what's there. And um, and on something like this where you really can't see a lot of it, that has a bigger impact because if I'm just kind of painting what I see in the reference, it'll look just like it. If I start forcing stuff in there, like if I start forcing, like there, I feel like I should be able to see another lug on top. But it's barely there. I mean, it's I can I'll put it in, so I can see it now. But um, but it's barely there. And the thing is, is if I if I come at the things thinking, oh, there's a lug in the top, and this is what it looks like, and I force it in, it's going to look like that. And I find that's usually where the, the the problems with any of the paintings are with mine is when I start really forcing that stuff in instead of just kind of letting the reference photo guide me. There we go. So that's it. Yeah, it wasn't. It wasn't very much. All right. So next is I think. Um, yeah, we'll knock out the black first. Uh, I'll use two brushes with this because I can leave one of them. I can leave black and white in each one. So for the shading on this, I want something real controllable. I want something that's like not gonna blow me out of the water so as far as oh, um, opacity so I'm going to use the 1 to 20 mix and I'm using the real small micron the, the little the little B to do this make sure that's clean first time I've used this today so <laughs> make sure it's gonna work okay so first thing I'm gonna tackle is this is the, the wheel and what we were just talking about so with this brush again I've said it before this brush is a really really super finely atomizing high detail brush so with this brush I don't need to always cut out a template to help me with you know getting things in where they should be uh, this brush can really do that and that's I've talked about it before with this brush and the other brush the micron C that's really what what you pay for with these brushes they're they're not inexpensive compared to other brushes but they perform like like you get what you pay for for sure is I guess what I'm trying to say so I'm able to kind of go in and do what I had said to, I was going to do I kind of rode that paintbrush line and uh, and then softly kind of rolled it around in fact I need to get that shadow around the bottom of the wheel a little bit. So I'm just gonna roll that in there with that. With that. Good. So there's some shadow on the wheel too, on the tire. Or shade, actually. So as the wheel rolls around towards the hubcap, it kind of gets darker a little bit. So same thing here. Again, if you have a brush that maybe doesn't atomize as finely as this, you can still do this, and it's essentially the way I do the razor blades, the really super tiny paintings where even this brush is, you know, trying to keep up. Um, I could just cut out a small template for this shape, the shape of the tire, and then I could use a bigger brush to do it. So, same thing um, for all of you. If you know, if you don't have your hands on something that's really super high detail, you could still do a lot by incorporating those more of those um, shields. Okay, so that looks good there. It's a little bit on the side of the tire between the stripe and the hub. I mean, the, yeah, well, the wheel itself. That looks good. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, so the, the wheel itself. There's 
reflection and shading on the top of the wheel and it kind of comes down. So I'm going to throw that in. Same thing here, you know, a, a bigger brush, I just make, I just cut a little template for that. But with this brush, I can get away with it. Uh, the center of the wheel is a little bit more shaded than the outside, so I'm going to grab that. And the bottom of the wheel hub has some shading on it too. I still want to sh this little reflection of the horizon here. I want to shade this down, but this is a great example. So I want to shade that down because that's a classic chrome trick. But that um, that's not how it is, so I'm not going to do it. <laughs> All right, so that's it for that. Pretty easy. Um, <clears throat> leave that black in the brush because I'll be jumping back to the black anyway. So we'll switch out to white. And for this, the same deal. For this, I need a little bit of control with this. So normally I'd use the one-to-one -one white because it's, the, it's, it's a nice balance of performance and opacity. But for this, I need a little bit more control. So I'm going to go with the one-to-two mix. So it's one part paint to two parts reducer. So funny, somehow last night, a tiny weird leak developed in one of the lines that I've been using for this compressor for this uh, setup. So the compressor has a they're al kind of alligator clips so they're, they're you know they're I don't know if you've seen them there basically you just take these small tubes these air tubes and they plug in to these um, ad not adapters they're, they're fittings so that you don't screw everything in like a normal fitting they just they just plug in with the and they, then these little teeth grab onto it and make an airtight seal I think one of the hoses has a teeny tiny little hole in it because I can hear the faintest hissing <laughs> so we gotta work on that after figure out where that's coming from the hosing that I have is is fairly old so it's not surprising the beauty of it is is um, with that system you can just literally cut a, a length of hose a new length of hose and replace it and it's done so that makes it easy <clears throat> should do a tech twos down that too all right so there's your white the other thing, real uh, uh, quick of note, these um, Grex trigger pads, I was never a fan of trigger pads from anyone. I thought they were squishy and bulky and all that stuff. I find if I spend a lot of time airbrushing, like a, if I spend like, you know, 10, 12 hours a day doing it, it really ends up fatiguing my finger. These little pads, especially the Grex ones, I really like the, the softness of it and the shape. Um, they really do help. I'm, I'm, I'm a fan. I'm a fan. Not all the time, like you notice the bee didn't have it on there. It depends on the brush and what I'm doing, and also, you know, how long I've been airbrushing for that day. Um, but yeah, you get used to it fast, and then it really helps. Okay, so it's enough talking. So just light up that little highlight. Again, this takes almost nothing. But again, it's another one of those things. All I want to do, I mean, it's so much fun. It's like icing on the cake, so you want to... I find myself wanting to hit it, like, like, go do it. I want to hit everything with this, make it all glow. But uh, it ends up looking terrible if you do that. Same thing. This little highlight down here, I still want to put one on there. I want to glow that, but I'm not going to because it's not in the photograph. So we'll leave it there. But there's the back wheel. Done. And that only took us about 13 minutes, which is cool. So we're going to move on to the next part in this episode. I think what I'm going to do, <clears throat> excuse me. I, and there's so many different ways to go here. It doesn't really matter. I could do the headlights and the grill. The uh, Chevelle fortunately had a had a pretty simple simple type of grill, so that's gonna not be a problem. Sometimes when grills are really like um, like a mesh type of material, th that can take some time. But this one's pretty straight ahead. It's just four lines that go across, so or five lines. Um, yeah, okay, let's do the let's do the bumper. We'll get that out of the way because the grill lines kind of tie into the headlights, so that's all kind of a one one deal. So we'll do that. Okay. So the I'll show you the reference here real quick. And it's the bumpers are usually a, a kind of a big decision making time type of thing. Um 
because there are things you got to because it's a big area of chrome, big area of reflection. So you can there are a lot of things sometimes that need to be taken out if you've made an adjustment to your painting. So for mine, I'm, mine's supposed to be in this showroom type setup. So obviously, I'm not going to have any of the asphalt green in this. Um, this is a curb. Um, this is the edge of the curb reflecting right here. Um, the rest of it is that's shadow reflecting right there. Or no, I'm sorry, that's the actually gap. That's shadow reflecting. Um, so, <clears throat> excuse me again. I don't know what that reflection is there of. So here's the way I kind of attack it. If there's anything that's absolutely obvious, like if there was a person standing in front of this car and that person obviously was reflecting in the bumper, I would obviously take that out. Uh, how many times can I say obviously? Um, <laughs> as far as the, 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 the break here, I actually like this. So this might be this reflection here of the street where the curb is here. I think I'm going to leave that in. That's going to be one of those things people are going to look at. It's going to register chrome and they're not going to want to figure it out because there is no street and there is no curb in my painting. So technically I should leave that out, but I kind of like it and I like the way that it ties into this side too. And it gives a chance to have a lot of nice reflections as well, that medium gray. If I were to take it out, what I would do is I actually wouldn't take it out. I would extend it all the way across and just fill in this gap. So, um, but I'm trying to see, this is the big decision right now. So if I leave it in, yeah, I think I'm going to leave it in. I'm going to take a chance. So here's the thing. If I leave it in and really don't like it, I can take it out. I can finish the, the gray across the, the fender. I mean, the, the bumper, um, but if I if I want it in after, I could do that too. It's a little bit more work. It's not terrible. So yeah, I'm thinking I'm leave it in. Okay. So we'll attack this with the lighter areas first, I think. Yeah, because we have a great medium gray right now. Yeah, so we're gonna have to reclaim those grays. Okay, that's that's the order of business. So what's gonna happen is this um I'll start this. I don't know if I can finish it in this episode, but it'll be finished in the next episode. Um, so, grab the cutting mat here. This is um, one of the, this is, I'm going to reuse this cutout. This I use for the interior right there. So, I'm going to just use the same cutout. The other question is, is do I want to lighten that whole thing? It's pretty dark in my painting. Huh. I do, and I'll tell you why I'm gonna I'm gonna lighten the whole thing, and I'll show you what made the decision for me. So, the base coat that I use for this um, is a little bit dark. Uh, the, remember, I don't know if you if you remember way back there was a repair that needed to be made right here, so there's a little scratch out here. So, I could have got away with leaving this gray as the gray, but that scratch out kind of sold the deal for me. So I have to cover that anyway. So instead of trying to match this whole thing with that one little area, I'll just paint the whole thing and that'll be easy. So we'll drop this over the side here and cut out this. So again, with these long cuts, I'm looking, so if the blades, if the blade tip is right at the edge of this license plate bracket, I'm looking about a quarter of an inch ahead. So my peripheral vision is, you know, you're that close anyway, so you can see the tip of the blade, but if you watch where you're going, uh, the cut comes out a lot straighter. And then when I do a cut like that, I think I mentioned it before, I'm not moving my fingers, retracting my fingers to make that cut. What I'm doing is, zip out a little bit so you can see this. Should I ticked off the ratty glove because I don't need that right now. So what I'm doing is once I set up for that cut, I'm moving, I'm keeping my hand locked exactly where it is, and then I'm just dragging my whole hand across. 
and that bigger muscle group of my forearm is what's keeping that straight. If I do the cut with my fingers, there's a lot more smaller, well, there are no muscles in your fingers, but there's so many, so much chance for, for more movement because that action is using smaller ligaments, essentially. Um, so it gives you, it, it would give you a, it's nice for more detailed cuts, but for long cuts, I try to keep the bigger muscle groups active. And that's true with, um, that's also true with airbrushing too. You know, I try to use bigger muscle groups if I'm trying to keep things smooth. Okay. That is good. Okay, so now anywhere where this color appears, oh, that's, is that going to be in the black anyway? No, it isn't. Good. I was going to say, if that repair on the corner of the bumper is in the black, I didn't have to do all this. I mean, I, I was on the fence on lightening up this anyway, so I, it's not a bad thing, but um, it works. All right, so this kind of fades into the top of the the bumper, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to just cut it off right here. And the reason for that is a cutout here and here is going to allow this little black piece to lift up as I'm spraying, and then I'll get a lot of I'll, I'll get a lot of mess underneath, a lot of underspray. If I just have the corner of the bumper and the bottom bumper, and then do this piece separately, uh, that's going to work out a lot better. Okay, so that's. I think that's it. Actually, I can grab this one too. This is lighter as well. But this isn't near the other cut, so this works out okay. There we go. And that's really light. That's going to be even lighter. This one over here, though, isn't as light, so we're going to grab this one too. Okay, so those are the those are the bits and pieces that we need. Back that a little bit so you can see it. So we got this this corner, the whole front piece where it stops for the reflection, and then the very front edge of this one. That's good. Okay. Now, if I was smart, I would look up in here to see if there are any of these that match that color and then I could do them all at once but um, I think for ease of kind of watching progression we'll take each individual piece so again like I said in the beginning um, I could do all the chrome in this whole car all in one step you know what I mean so anywhere where there's the this medium gray I would pull that out of every single piece like the wheels the the trim on top wherever it appeared and then do all the chrome with that color first and then move on to the next color and or next value in the chrome and the white and the highlights and the paint brushing and all that just do all the chrome all at once that's totally a, a, a great way to do it uh, but the other side of that too is you can split it up if that's overwhelming you can just work on piece by piece I don't know for me um, it keeps the painting interesting um, because I'm, I'm looking forward to the next part, you know, instead of having it all kind of progress all at once. And again, it's totally personal preference. You could do really, you could do it either way and it would, it would come out great. There, the advantage of doing it all the chrome at once is you have all the colors mixed up for each one of them, for each value. You don't have to keep remixing that value color. So that's the advantage of doing it the other way. <clears throat> but again, you know, um, For this, it's, you know, the amount of time you save, it's not, not overly huge, so, um, so again, it's not, it's not a massive thing. All right, so one area that's going to need some attention, probably, is this corner right here. Now, the bumper looks like, it looks like I came a little bit farther down with the fender. You can just see it peeking through there. So I could avoid that, or I could just spray over it, and I think I'm going to spray over it. I'm going to assume that I brought the fender down too far because the the bumper lines up really well, and everything seems to be seems to be in good shape, even up here where the 
where I use the same template, you can see the <clears throat> excuse me, you can see the part where I sprayed through and it's per it's lined up. So everything's lined up. So my guess is that I made a mistake when I did the fender. Okay. Okay. The one advantage too with aluminum is usually on the ampersand I have to use these jumbo magnets to get through the ampersand down to the steel. The smaller magnets work a little bit better on the aluminum. They just pass the, the magnetic ability passes through those the aluminum better. So is that advantage too? All right, I have white mixed up in here, so I'm going to add a little bit of black to it. So for mixing, for mixing black, I usually grab the ten to one. So I have that really, uh, you know, the reduced white in here, the two to one, one to two, um, in here already. So usually to to tint a color, I'll grab the ten to one, unless I'm going for really dark black and then or dark gray, and then I'll grab the one to five because it'll work a little bit quicker with less paint. But uh, generally, this one to ten is what I grab when I'm trying to mix colors. <clears throat> <clears throat> Man, frog in my throat again. I normally record these Chevy paintings in the morning. It's about 6 o'clock in the morning here right now. And uh, so you guys are the first people I'm talking to. <laughs> so I'm learning now why that's not necessarily a good thing. Or that I should maybe go talk to the birds in the morning first so that I can warm up a little bit. But... Uh, Thank you for hanging with me. All right, so there is, there is a, like a lighter medium, lighter gray. So I, I, I picked us just a step up above that. We'll see how that looks. I can always adjust it. It's, it just needs a, a base to start. <clears throat> okay. So I don't need magnets on the bottom because I can hold it down with my fingers, but I do need them on the top to keep that from going anywhere. These are going to snap together because they are jumbo strong. So there we go. Uh, let me grab a new reference photo since I just cut up the reference photo I was using. This will work. This is another one that I'd already used, but this is the one I used for the wheels, so that will that'll work out okay. You can see what I'm doing now. Yeah, it's pretty straightforward. I just want to make sure there weren't any. Um, <clears throat> I didn't want. I just want to make sure there wasn't anything in it, any other reflections. All right, so that might be. I didn't back flush it, so that was white that was coming out. So I'm just going to put the cloth on there and back flush it and get that white mixed in with the color here. There we go. Spray that out a little bit. Now we should get the gray. Again, huge advantage to working in light layers. So as I'm spraying that and I started, I realized that it was white paint that was coming out. If I just blasted that, again, it's going to be gray, so I would have just covered the white, but it just would have meant extra work to do, you know, cleaning up. So, But by spraying that first white light layer, I, I could see that it was white before it became a problem. Oh, much better. <clears throat> The same thing here, light, light layers. All right, so I do need some sort of magnet product over here. Maybe I can do that. No, you don't want to do that because it's going to want to do that. There we go. Do that. Stay. Okay. Because I don't want any underspray on the fender of the car, the black of the car. So the hardest part about spraying in light layers and building up opacity is not at the beginning, it's near the end. Because near the end, now I've got this pretty much to the color that, or the value that I, that I want. It's reaching its uh, opacity. It's reaching its final you know, color. So at this point, I can't see the paint that I'm putting on because it's the same color as what's already on there. So it makes it difficult to see. So I'll, I'll often look at it from a really steep angle and just watch for the wetness of the paint being applied. And it's the beauty of the airbrush. You can really see that as it's being applied. So that will allow me to kind of keep that same really light layers. Because what happens is I, I do it all the time. You can't see the paint going on. You don't know that it really is. You start pushing it harder, and then that's when it spider webs because you're dumping paint on it because you can't see what you're doing. 
Okay, good. And now this part of the bumper over here. Make sure I got everything. Also, giving this stuff time to dry is a really, really good thing too. So as I'm making a pass on this part, I'll start working on this. It dries very quickly, but you can't get ahead of it if you just keep layering, layering, layering. There's a chance that you know the paint underneath won't dry before you get to it, before you keep layering, and that's when you get a mess too. So, all right, get these, oh, these magnets hold on really strong. Here we go. So this is where we're at. Much better. Super simple, subtle. I actually kind of like that dark too. Uh, but we're going to lighten that and see what happens. All right, great. Join me for the next one, and we will finish this bumper up.